Hello, and welcome back to Spaces or Laces. I'm your host, Jeff Meyer. It was an extremely, extremely rough week for Pittsburgh sports. The pit game, I was in attendance, got soaked. It was a lot of fun. A lot of fun watching them getting killed by Penn State. Then the Steelers, tying the Cleveland Browns. That is correct. They started their season off with a tie against the Cleveland Browns. And on a, a real note, on a sad note, uh, Mac Miller's passing last weekend. They had a nice tribute uh, for him at the Pitt Penn State game. So between those three things and it raining all weekend, it was a rough, rough weekend for Pittsburgh. Um, I want to dive a little bit into the Pitt Penn State game. Whew. I don't know if I had a few too many adult beverages, but first half I was I was pleased. I mean, it was a close game. They played them tight, played them tough. There was a lot of bad coaching decisions, uh, missed opportunities. I thought Pitt had a chance early. I thought they really did. I mean, the first drive, Penn State went down, scored like it was nothing, but Pitt answered. Pitt answered. Um, not sure if it was the first or second quarter, but it was going. I know it was a play going towards the student section. It was a fourth down. They were in field goal range, Pitt was. I'm talking about Pitt now. And they went for it. Now, I like the decision to go for it there. You're playing a better opponent. You're at home. You have momentum. You have them on the ropes a little bit. But the play call. Come on, Pat Narduzzi. Do you want to win big games or not? I don't know who made the call. I'm assuming it wasn't Pat Narduzzi. probably the offensive coordinator. But what the fuck are you doing? So, up until that point in the game, Pitt was mostly spreading them out. They had at least three, four receivers doing a lot of zone read things, inside run, um, really taking advantage of Penn State's interior line, running between the tackles. And they were running They were running well. They were taking advantage of that. And then on that fourth down play, they bring in the big boys, two, three tight ends, can't remember exact formation, but they had, they had their big boys in. They had everyone stacked. And Penn State brought everyone down, everyone in the box, and the better the better team made the play. It was such a horrible play call, literally oh, so predictable. If you're gonna do that, if that's the formation you go, it's play action pass. I don't to that point, I don't know, I don't know. I'm just upset. I, it's days, this is Thursday. That was on Saturday. I'm still upset. Unbelievable. I just can't understand that fucking play call. I want, if you're going to stack the box like that, if you're going to bring the big boys and allow Penn State to stack the box like that, that has to be a play action pass. Has to be. They're too big, they're too athletic, they're too tough up front, especially when you, you put them in an obvious run situation, an obvious run formation. You got to have a play action there. But honestly, what I wanted, I wanted four wide and an RPO. Maybe an inside read. If he looks inside. There's something there, hands it off, or makes a quick slant pass, something like that. I, I like the decision to go for it, but the play call I thought was horrible. Um, and then the second half, I mean, there's no, I had left sometime in the fourth quarter. Yeah, I'm a bad fan. Sorry, it was raining. I, I went to the south side, drowned my sorrows because fucking Pitt lost to Penn State again. Now Penn State's 2-1 and one in the series, and probably going to be 3-1 after next year because uh, Pitt's got to go back to Penn State. But that fourth quarter was rough. It was hard to watch. Um, some of the inexperience, some of the uh, youth for uh, Pitt really showed in the second half. But man, I lo- Pitt loves to do this kind of shit. Make you hopeful, give you a little glimmer of hope. I mean, the first half was it was interesting. I mean, I saw some opportunities, I saw some daylight, but that second half, the better team went into the locker room, they got coached up, made the necessary adjustments, and took over. They let, they let their athletes take over. It was rough. It's hard to admit that for me. The better team won. Yeah, I said it. The better team won, but oh, it was rough. And then, oh, talk about rough. We might as well just dive on into it too. That's I don't have much more to say about the Pitt Penn State game other than I was very sad. It sucked. Not fun. Had a poncho on. Of course, uh, the two dollar poncho really wasn't working. Just got drenched. Drank a lot of beers though. Made up for it a little bit, but got drenched. Um, Steelers at Cleveland, high. Six turnovers on offense. Big Ben, man, that was not 
Uh, Big Ben's finest game, I'll tell you that. Um, made a lot of poor throws, some poor decisions, had a deflected, uh, not deflected, I guess the receiver went off his hands, intercepted. Like, you can never help those, but, I mean, it was rough. James Conner, crucial fumble. Actually, I don't want to start there at James Conner. Let's, let's retract that. Yes, it was a bad fumble, but James Conner came to play Sunday. I forget his Zach touched our stat line, but I think he had like 31 touches, 130 rushing yards, 20 receiving yards, two touchdowns. Thank you, James Conner. You're a guy that, you know, kids these days should look up to as far as sports figures. Um, he was a pit boy, and he obviously went through all the you know, stuff at Pitt with uh, the cancer. Um, he's persevered. I mean, it's an un- unbelievable story. I'm like, as a pit athlete, one of the, you know, I don't want to say one of the best there, but he was a damn good pit running back. I and mean, there's a lot of good pit running backs as I showcased last week, but um, he's up there with, you know, his name has to be mentioned with Tony Dorsett, Sean McCoy, Dion Lewis, Kim, or Craig Hayward. Who else? Uh, Dion Lewis, Shady McCoy, um, LaRod Stevens Howling. I mean, so those are more guys in my, you know, my time frame. But so many great uh, pit running backs. James Conner's name is mentioned. Had the knee injury. Also had to undergo uh, cancer treatments. Overcame that. The knee. Had a solid, um, it was June, I think it was junior year, senior year. I can't remember. I think it was junior year. I think he went out after his junior year. But had a solid season. Was drafted third by the Steelers. Worked his butt off last year. Came in. When Le'Veon Bell isn't around, isn't there, hasn't signed the franchise tag yet, and he produced. He really produced. He was the only bright spot on that Steelers team. Other, Well, there was three bright spots, but he was the major bright spot. Everything he's overcame over, and will continue to overcome with this team, he put on a showcase. I'm so... I was weird to say, I want to say proud. I, I, I mean, I'm just so happy for him. Like, what a great guy. He's never done anything wrong. I mean, actually, he's done one thing wrong. It was that fucking haircut. I don't know what he was thinking about a haircut. But nonetheless, one haircut, bad haircut, doesn't, like, overshadow his performance, his character. The hard physical run. He finishes runs off. I was just so excited for how he played overall. Caught a couple of passes out of the back foot. He had a, I think it was a big, I mean, it was a big third down, second down. He had a one-handed catch out of the backfield. Made a little move, ran someone over. I mean, it was a 15-yard gain, something like that. I think he moved the sticks. Hey, he, he did everything he wanted. But he did have that one fumble. And that one fumble changed the momentum of that game. The Steelers were up 21-7. Had the ball in their own, like, 25-yard line-ish, somewhere in that, ter- you know, that, uh, that area. And he got stripped. It happens. Put the ball on the ground. Big games, big times are defined by turnovers. And he he had a bad one. He got scooped up by Drill Peppers. Took the one yard line where Ben came back. I don't know how he did it. Knocked him out of bounds. Uh, but the Browns ended up scoring anyway. But that was the turning point. They're still was up 21 7. Looked like they're, you know, gonna drive, maybe put some more points on the boards, close out the game. Next thing you know, it's 21 14. I think Miles Garrett, I think that's his name. Pass rusher for the Browns. Um, he's one that did the old punch technique, knocked the ball out of corner, and then the next possession, strip fumbled Ben. Next thing you know, it's 21 21, and then the rest is history, the, uh, the great tie. But it was rough. I mean, the Steelers got to get back on track. They got a huge game this weekend. Huge game. Home game against the Chiefs. Now, I think it's interesting. Um, uh, Steelers are minus four and a half at home against the Chiefs. I don't know about all that. If I was a betting man, I kind of do betting. Last week, I had some rough bets. Ooh, I didn't take all the ones I predicted because that would have been bad. But Steelers minus four and a half at home. I'd have to go to the Chiefs to cover that. After the Steelers' piss poor performance against the Browns on the road. Now, here's the difference. Road Ben, awful. Ben at home. Usually plays a lot better. Ben at home is, is a whole different animal. But Chiefs look pretty good. Um, I don't really know what to think. Bell's still not there. 
Um, but I don't know what's going to happen with Bell. I haven't heard any rumors, sources. Maybe on Bell at this point, he might sit out four, five, six, maybe more games. And I hope not. I really hope not. The Stewart fans, rough. I want to pull out the Bell jersey and be proud to wear it. I can't right now. Can't. But getting back to last week's game, I'm wearing TJ Watts jersey. And that, that guy had a hell of a game. I believe four sacks. Maybe a forced fumble. He had the block field goal at the end of the game, which uh, preserved the tie versus a loss. Which, hey, then the season that could come, that could come down. Hope the Steelers make the playoffs. I mean, at this point, with Bell not playing, Steelers might be a wild card team. The division's not locked right now. The Bengals and the Ravens both won last week. Steelers and Browns are tied. So. I don't know. That tie could come in handy later in the year versus a loss when you can, you know, compare the records and everything like that. But weird seeing the Steelers at the bottom of the AFC North after one week and playing the Chiefs as we get home. They start 0 1 and 1. People in Pittsburgh are going to be pissed. There's going to be people coming at Tomlin, people talking shit on Bell, people probably talking shit on Ben Roethlisberger, especially the, uh, after his week one performance and then a loss at home to the Chiefs. And the defense for the Steelers didn't look good last week. They didn't. I'll tell you this, it's, it's unfortunate. But damn, do they miss uh, Shazier. I mean, I'm stating the obvious there. Shazier, absolute freak. Hell of a football player. His leadership. Oh, it was evident, it was evident last week. They were missing Shazier on that, on that defense. But Emmons played well. Safeties, uh, young guy, played well. T.J. Watt played very well, as I, as I just mentioned. He was a bright spot. So the other bright spot from last week, before I forget to mention, Juju had a week. Juju played well. A.B., I can't really say he played well, but I feel like that was more of a Big Ben's lack of production. But A.B. still got his, what do you have, like six catches, 70, 80 yards, touchdown. I mean, he did okay in fantasy football, so... I think he had a decent game, but Juju, I think, had four catches over 100 yards, no touchdown, played well. Hopefully that continues this week in the absence of Bell. You need, Ju- you need the offense to play well against the Chiefs. You need Juju. You need Brown. You need Big Ben especially. The quarterback has to play well. And you need Connor to have another good performance. I thought it was interesting last week. I think he was the only running back in the NFL that had 100% of the, of the, like, the touches at the running back position. I think he had 31 touches, 33, somewhere around there. But he had 100% of the touches. Never got spelled for third down situations, anything like that. He played the entire game. Hats off to James Conner. He was the biggest bright spot, other than uh, Juju and TJ Watt being bright spots as well. But it's going to be interesting this week. It's going to be very, very interesting. The Steelers lose. Like I said, I guess I was beginning to talk about it a little bit ago. 0-1-1. Zero one and one. So even hard to say a tie. But if that happens, what are we in? Ten years into uh, Mike Tomlin's tenure as the Steelers head coach, might be people start calling for his head. Because and my one friend said this, and I'll give him credit. My friend Nick uh, mentioned to me Mike Tomlin, Ben Roethlisberger, A. B. And that core of guys, like the Le'Veon Bell, the Killer Bees, Mike Tomlin, they haven't won a Super Bowl. And for how talented that offense has been, they've had three, they've had three pro bowlers. I mean, Bell and A.B. in the last two to three years have been top 25 players in the NFL. You have two guys on offense top 25. Big Ben, wherever you want to put him, he's a top-tier quarterback. Throughout his career, he's flirted in the top five, always been a top 10 in my opinion. He's going to go to the Hall of Fame, has two Super Bowl wins. But they, like those guys together haven't won the Super Bowl. They went to one and lost. They, I guess, um, no, 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 they won one and lost one. But that first one was Bill Cowher's team. I don't care what anyone says. That was Cowher's team. Um, that was the Cardinals' Super Bowl. But then they played the Packers and lost. So I guess you can give Tomlin one Super Bowl, but then Ben, Bell, and Brown, they don't have a Super Bowl together. That's very, very disappointing considering how talented they've been at times. They've had the couple years there, I don't know if it was like 2011 and 12, somewhere they had a god-awful line, somewhere back then. The last three years, 
They've had an all pro line. You've had Pouncey at center, DeCastro. Uh, Villanueva has been playing very well. Uh, Roman Foster. Uh, you've, you know, you've had a good line. You've had veterans on that line, and just they haven't they haven't produced uh, as far as Super Bowl and like a lot of playoff wins and stuff like that. So I don't know. It's tough. It's tough to say, but there might be some Mike Tomlin. Uh, Getting fired, stuff started in Pittsburgh, you know, a little bit in the rumor mill, as I like to call it. You know, people might start talking, but I don't know. It was, it was a rough week, Pittsburgh sports. Makes me depressed. I'm I'm down, I'm down and out, uh, looking for a rebound this weekend. Not going to get it from Pitt, though. They have Georgia Tech at home. Tickets are going for like $5 a piece right now. Georgia Tech's favorite. I don't know what the spread is, but they're going to... They're probably going to win. Pitt's probably going to get one and two. Um, talking about some other college football real quick, like the wrap-up of the NFL. WU's game at NC State got canceled because of the hurricane. Um, just two games that I saw on the radar. There's a lot of bad games this week in college football. A lot of bad games. Two, though, I did see that should be very good. Number four, Ohio State at number 15, TCU. It's going to be a big, big game. This is, you know, week three for college football. It's early, but this is a big one. We get to see what TCU has to offer. And that's important for the Big 12, bringing up WU. I'm very, very curious to see what happens to the Big 12 this year. I think WU, WU might be the team to beat. But, I mean, TCU's not a bad school either. So if they can, you know, at home, knock off number four Ohio State. Be very interesting college football. And then number 12, LSU, is going to number seven, Auburn. This game is my most important game for the weekend. It's a 3.30 matchup. Um, this has huge implications for the end of the year when uh, some of the southbound sports guys are going down to the georgia Auburn game at Georgia. I'm hoping both teams at that point stay undefeated because that would be a hell, hell of a matchup to see as far as an SEC uh, matchup. Whew. I'm excited. That's in November, November 10th. Shit, that's two months away, and I'm already excited for it. Super excited. So I hope uh, Auburn can handle business against LSU. LSU looked good last week against Miami. LSU always has talent. They always recruit well. People want to go to LSU. It's not like being a a pit program where you have to force, you have to recruit out your ass, try to force people to go there. People want to go to LSU. People enjoy going to LSU. People win at LSU. So that helps a lot too. So... This isn't going to be an easy match for, all, uh, for Auburn. Like I just mentioned, LSU always has talent. So it'll be interesting to watch this week. I'm excited. It has huge implications for the end of the year with the SEC, with um, the game we're going to. makes it interesting. But I'm going to um, go around the NFL real quick, and I want to have a little light them up segment to finish today off. Uh, I almost forgot about it. Um, but let me get around the NFL real quick. Let's play some bets here. Ravens, Ravens at Bengals. Bengals are a one-point favorite home. I'm taking Ravens. Chiefs, Steelers. Steelers are four-and-a-half-point favorites at home. I'm taking Chiefs. Panthers at Falcons. Falcons are minus six at home. I think the Falcons get a roll in this week and win. I'm taking the Panthers to cover that one. Colts at Redskins. Redskins minus six at home. Ooh, this one's tough. Andrew Luck played well last week. Redskins looked amazing. I'm going to take the Redskins at home. Texans, Titans, Titans plus 1.5 at home, taking Texans. Eagles, Bucks, Bucks 3.5 at home. The Buccaneers, let's talk about them a little bit. I'm going to stop. I'm going to hold right here. They beat the Saints week one. A lot of people at Saints, Super Bowl favorites. It's crazy. I almost said Fitzgerald. Fitzpatrick, whatever the hell his name is, stepping in for Jameis Winston, put up some points. That offense High and mighty, rolling week one. Can't believe they beat the Saints. That is the NFC. The NFC South is going to be interesting this year. It might be the most interesting division in all of football. You have the Saints, you have the Bucks, you have the Carolina Panthers, and you have the Falcons. I love the Falcons. We're going to get get back to um, Super Bowl level, making deep run in the playoffs this year. Lost Eagles week one. It was a sloppy game. Could have easily won, but ended up losing. But that division got very, very interesting. Um, 
last week after the Bucks knocked off the Saints. But I'm going to take the, the Bucks plus five, three and a half at home against the Eagles. And the Eagles are going to go one and one now after knocking off the Falcons. Dolphins at Jets. Jets minus two and a half at home. After last week, knocking off the Lions, beating them bad. I'm taking the Jets at home. Chargers, Bills. Bills plus seven and a half at home. I love home dogs, but Nate Peterson, I don't know who's playing quarterback. They're not going to do well. I'm going to take the Chargers on the road. Vikings, Packers. Packers minus one at home. I'm taking Aaron Rodgers minus one at home. We got Browns, Saints. Saints rebound. They're minus eight and a half. I'm taking the Saints. Um, they have to rebound. Eight and a half is a lot of points, but they have to rebound after the week one, losing to the Bucks. And then the Browns, they're still gonna, they're still not gonna get that first one of the season, I don't think. Um, then Lions, 49ers, 49ers minus six at home. 49ers lost eight points, I think, to the Vikings last week. Lions got blown out. I think Jimmy G rebounds, and so Matt Stowers in a rebound too. So, oh, that's gonna be tough. I'm gonna take Lions plus six on the road. I don't know if they're gonna win or not, but I think they'll cover. Now, the Cardinals are at the Rams. Rams minus 13 at home. That is a huge spread. Taking the Rams. Minus 13. Fucking cash it here. Then Pats are chatting to the Jags. Jags plus one at home. I'm taking the Patriots. Jags look good week one. Fournette got, I'm pretty sure Fournette got hurt at one point. Um, Yes, the Giants. Taking Tom Brady. Minus one. They're going to win. We got Raiders, Broncos. Broncos are minus six at home against the Raiders. I was long. I was wrong last week. The Seahawks. I'm gonna take the Broncos again. I'm gonna have John Gruden going own two to start the season. We got the Broncos minus six at home. I don't know why I ever bet against the Broncos playing a mile high. I love to do it. Love to do it. Lost last week with that one. I betted on that one. Good job, Seahawks. But Russell Wilson played well, just not well enough. Um, then final week of the game or final game of the week. Cowboys minus three at home. Giants, plus three. I watched the Giants, watched a little bit of the Cowboys. The Cowboys, they're not good. <laughs> they're not good. I don't know how they let Des Bryant walk. That whole situation still debacles me. Cut them, lose, I don't even know what it was, $9 million. I'm talking about my ass right now. I don't know how much money they lost, but they lost too much in that whole ordeal. Dak, Dak might be a phony. He might have had a rookie, a great rookie season, but last year went through the sophomore slump. Didn't look great. Week one against the Panthers. Zeke looked all right. That team is built to run the football. They have to run the fucking football to be successful. I don't know. There's no other. There's no other way to talk about it. And Sean Lee, by the way, I watched the game with my Cowboys uh, friend last week. Sean Lee, wow, I can't even say his name. He looked so bad. Sean Lee looked bad week one. Made a lot of miss ta- like had a lot of missed tackles. Didn't make some plays that I've watched year in and year out. He he make. Being the Pro Bowl player, he is the you know the high caliber player he is. He didn't look good week one, and that defense didn't look good. I'm gonna take the Giants with Odell Beckham. Eli Manning had decent games to Jags. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take Odell, and I'm gonna take the Giants to go to Jerry World and knock off the Cowboys. That's my that's my week week two NFL wrap up. Hopefully it goes much better in week one. I fucking sucked week one, no doubt about it. But uh, I want to finish with a little light em up segment. So I didn't get to really watch the game. I was working last Sunday night. No crazy working on Sunday night. But Aaron Rodgers goes down. This segment's on Aaron Rodgers. Everyone is literally, I don't even want to say what I was going to say, but they are going crazy for Aaron Rodgers. Just riding, you know, his, you know what, going crazy. Dude, that motherfucker has been hurt. More times than anyone I've ever seen. He's got a glass collarbone. Sure, when he's healthy and he's throwing the rock, he's one of the best quarterbacks ever. He's so athletic, so good on the run. He throws on the run probably better than he does in the pocket, which is absurd because he's phenomenal in the pocket. But Aaron fucking Rodgers is sometimes, somehow always hurt, somehow magically plays through all these injuries. Everyone just loves to jerk off to him. Dude, I'm tired of Aaron Rodgers. There's a reason you sat for three or four years in the NFL before getting your first start. And you sat behind the legend, Brett Favre, gunslinger, Mr. Brett Favre. Dude, I'm just sick of you. I used to love the Packers growing up because of Brett Favre. I've never been an Aaron Rodgers fan, and everyone always talks shit on me for that, but I do not like Aaron Rodgers. Dude, 
If he's as talented as everyone makes him out to be, how does he not won four Super Bowls by now? Great. I think that's a great question. Tom Brady has won five. Big Ben's won two. Peyton Manning's won two. Lost one. So Ben lost one, too. They were in three Super Bowls. Aaron Rodgers has only been in one Super Bowl. Yes, he won it. Yes, he played amazing in those playoffs. But, dude, when it comes to Super Bowls, he's on the same level as Joe Flacco and Trent Dilfer. I don't give a fuck about your one ring. And yet people could argue, come back at me and be like, Dan Marino never won a Super Bowl. Aaron Rodgers won one. I don't care. You have people, like, I'm going to rattle them off. Joe Montana, John Elway, Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, all these great quarterbacks. There's so many, so many more. Big Ben, um, Eli Manning. I mean, there's tons of quarterbacks from early years. Uh, Roger Starbuck, uh, Starback, whatever the fuck his name, dumb cowboy's name is. But so many uh, great quarterbacks throughout the NFL history have been to multiple Super Bowls. Won multiple Super Bowls. He's been to one and won one. Get off his dick. He needs to play somehow better, which is, I know it's absurd to say it. Someone, I feel like, I feel like an idiot saying that. But how's he not had more success in playoffs overall? Like, for how much everyone, like, he never takes criticism. Somehow it's never his fault. When things are going bad for the Packers, it's his receivers. It's his offensive line. It's his running backs. It's never him. Like, I've heard over the last couple years, I've heard Eli Manning get destroyed by the media. Tom Brady has a bad week. He needs to retire. Big Ben, bad week. He's hurt. Still our nation going up in flames over Big Ben. Matt Ryan, choke artist. I've heard it all. Scam Newton. Speechless. Speechless. I've heard every excuse in the fucking book for Aaron Rodgers and no other quarterback gets a pass like him. Why is Aaron Rodgers so fucking special that he gets passes? If he's as good as everyone makes him out to be, he should have as many Super Bowl wins as Tom Brady. He should be Tom Brady, but guess what? He's not. He's Aaron Rodgers. He has one ring, and a lot of other people in the NFL currently and in the past have had more oppor- uh, more Super Bowl appearances and more Super Bowl wins than Aaron Rodgers. Sorry, Rodgers, this is your year to prove it. You should have you should have made the Super Bowl last year, and you're you're my you're my um, NFC Super Bowl pick this year. If you're as good as everyone says you are, you're gonna make the Super Bowl this year. You're gonna take the Packers back to the promised land and bring the Lombardi Trophy home to the Green Bay Packers to Lambeau Field where it belongs. We'll see how it goes this year. I'm out. I'm done. Week two, Aaron Rodgers, it's time for you to man up this season. Time, quit getting hurt. Man up. Be, be like Brett Favre. Play through injuries. I know I know you came back and you won the game. You're down, what, 23-something. I don't know. You end up winning 24-23. That's great. That was the Bears, though. That's not a very good team. They have a good defense, apparently. But they're not a very good team. Let's see if we can do this week against the Vikings. It's time for you to step up. And with that, this is Jeff Meyer on Spaces Laces, over and out.